Yeah. Um, yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Um, of course, this day for many years has not been very special because honestly, I know this will sound maybe cliche-ish, but honestly, for years since Jesus got a hold of me, every day is Thanksgiving. I realize, you know, it's a special day like Christmas and we get together, many people get together in a way they don't get together the rest of the year. But uh, as for us, our house, the houses of this ministry, we, we, get, we get together on a regular basis. I mean, family dinners and everything. So, but a few of us were talking and, you know, there's, there's always those that were with us that are no longer with us. And for the most part, it has to do with, you know, you have true Christians that the first anointing on their life, when they're born again and filled with the Spirit, there's an anointing that the Lord puts on every life to give them grace to begin to walk away from their old life and walk away from worldliness, walk away from sin and uh, to lose their life as the scripture says. Jesus said, unless you lose your life, you won't find it. And um, so there are always those that will go so far, but then when it comes to living in community with God's people, meaning living in close relationships with God's people, the old, a lot of the old life doesn't go away. They, and I can just, for example, they continue to deceive, they continue to just uh, lie, manipulate, control. Um, very hard to, to maintain a good relationship with people that that believe in the Lord but don't walk out their belief or don't really follow the leading of the Spirit in their own life. Everybody, everybody, I don't care who you are, when you come to the Lord, there are things that need to fall off of your life. It's just the truth. And I won't go into explaining why that is or whatever. If you can't figure it out, then you just have to try to figure it out. But, uh, you know, control and manipulation um, are a, a huge part of every human's life, all of us. And, um, you know, uh, there's a principle that comes out of Proverbs that says contention comes only by pride. And so in every relationship you have, you've got in relationships you have those that lead and those that follow, those that, those that try to influence and those that are influenced. And pride, when people are in pride, you know, their relationship really melts down pretty regularly because of contention. Each one is pridefully trying to control the other into believing what they believe, doing what they do. You know how that is. That's how life is. But, uh, and then what happens is, it's a snare really to the righteous. Pride and contention, deceiving, being deceived, lying, manipulating, controlling, trying to govern people's lives. You know, it's not our job to really govern somebody's life. 
Okay, so I'm the father of this fellowship or the apostle of this particular work. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's my job to govern everybody and control everybody and get everybody to live the way we live, believe what we believe. That's not what that means. You know, the authority in the church is to manifest and and deal with the works of the enemy over people's lives. So I'm like a spiritual cop. And when you come into my presence as if if you're open and if you're you know wanting to follow the Lord and if you're wanting to to live a holy life, you come into my presence then as you are open and honest and free, then I, as, as a spiritual leader, I can discern through the gift of discerning of spirits, I can discern some of the spiritual influences that have been in your life from the beginning and that are in your life today to help you see the negative influences that have always caused you to fail in life. That's, that's the operation. My job is not to get you to think differently. The Holy Spirit will help you think differently. Your relationship with Jesus in the Holy Ghost will begin to change the spirit of your mind, which causes you to begin to think differently. The leadership's job, the apostle, the prophet, the shepherd, is to, through discerning capabilities help you see the enemy the spiritual enemies the spiritual influences that take you off the path that keep you from seeing the kingdom that keep you from recognizing God's rule in your life that's my job my job isn't to deal with you my job is to deal help you see the influencing spirits, the negative spirits, the demons even, in your life that are always trying to take you out or take you somewhere that will eventually destroy your life. That's my job, to deal with the, the spiritual enemy is not to deal with you. You're not the enemy. You're not the problem. The problem is the influences you're under. You only become the problem when you're in pride and you refuse to recognize that change for your life is eminent or, or important. Now, it's still not my job to make you see that. Now, I said pride and contention becomes the enemy of the righteous. The reason I say that is because the spiritual leaders that God puts in his church have a greater measure of love than those that are coming into the church. I don't know if that bothers you, <laughs> bothers people, but it's really love. It's a measure of love that creates change. And so what happens is I love you more than you love me. I love you your soul being in a good condition, being, being good, being right. I love you being able to see the enemies of your soul more than you do. Some things you want to see, some things you're familiar with, you like, you want to keep, and, and that's where the rift becomes because then it puts me in a position, what am I going to do with the realities and the truth of influences in your life that I know are there and when I reason with you you can see it there but really in your heart you don't want to change you don't want to kick them out you don't you don't want to free yourself from those influences those influences have become your friends what do I do with that now if I'm not careful and if I'm not ordered within my own walk with the Lord, I'll start battling you. 
to get you to do what I see is right for you to do. But that's not my job. The scripture actually says that you might see the truth, that you might recover yourself. Nobody, I can't deliver anybody, in that, and you know, that's a fallacy also in the church, and especially in the charismatic full gospel church. They think, that they teach, they preach, ministers walk the earth thinking they have the power to deliver people from demons. They don't. I'll tell you what they have the power to do. They have the authority and the power to manifest the demons. The demons can be manifest, may openly revealed, can be seen as demons. And, but they don't have the power to deliver anybody from a demon unless the person is totally overcome and they have not the power within themselves to resist. Then the minister of the spirit has an authority to deliver. But those spirits will come back once the person is free. They have to decide to no longer allow those spirits in back into their life. So here's here's a principle, here's a rule. This is your little Thanksgiving principle. This is this is a uh, a principle of life, a principle of living. And I'll Here's what it is. Anything that you cannot govern, anything you cannot control, anything you cannot change, you need to release. You need to realize the will of God for your life is that you are the one that needs to back off. You are the one that needs to change. You are the one that needs to stop trying to exercise. It ends up exercising witchcraft and control, hoping you'll free somebody from their enemies. And it doesn't work. You got to realize, you got to come to understand the principle of life is people decide what they want and what they don't want. And if, you, if everybody thinks about their own life and can do a little history, do a little history check of your life, you'll find that's true. There's certain things you don't like, that you've never liked, that you'll never do. Because why? You set your will not to do it. You don't, you know, I make it, there's another principle. No man ever went crossways to his belief system. I used to say to people, and it used to really kind of provoke them, thinking I was saying I was a mind reader. But I used to say to people, I'll tell you what you believe. I'll tell you what you believe by what I see you do. Because nobody acts contrary to their belief system. And so when people are under the wrong influence, when people, however they want to live their life, you know, we run into it today, people believe they're born homosexuals. They believe they're born to do the gender thing. You know, they're born alcoholics. They believe alcoholism is a disease. All you can do is, if they're open to it, you can instruct them as to the truth of it and as to demonic influence and demonic governing over your life. But ultimately, their deliverance is totally in their hands. They have to say, Lord, I see it, please, in Jesus Christ's holy name. I resist, I rebuke, and I command you, spirit of greed or lust 